Welcome to the summer edition of Trees in Jefferson Gardens. My name is Sydney Sison of the Leamington Society and we're going to show you round trees which are in bloom in the summer and help you to identify them and where they are. Now I'm standing by the gates in Newbold Terrace with this wonderful sign here and the Dudley Lion. Notice the Dudley Lion has got two tails. Watch out for it in Warwick. I'm standing under one of two western catalpas. The other one is to my left and they frame the gates which lead to Newbold Terrace. This is a close relative of the Indian bean tree, one of which stands by the lake recognisable by the huge leaves and at this time of year the almost bean-like flowers, wonderful white cascades which later become long bean-like pods. It's a native of America. Catalpa in fact is the name of a Cherokee Indian tribe. In America the sphinx caterpillar loves these leaves and fishermen love the sphinx caterpillar, so it's also known as a bait tree. The long beans used to be smoked for medicinal and other purposes, and so it's also known as a cigar tree. You will see lots of these trees, or Indian bean trees, round the Houses of Parliament and in St James's Park in London. This is a lime tree on the top lawn of Jefferson Gardens. Another name, the old British name, is a linden tree. Hence we've got the linden arches in the pump room gardens with all the limes or lindens down the side of the green space. This tree is in flower. They are known as perfect flowers because they have both male and female parts loved by bees and loved by beekeepers for lime honey. The tree is also loved by aphids and they love the sap and ants in turn like the sap, they farm the aphids for the sap and quite a lot as a result of that drips. So woe betide you if you leave a car under a lime tree it'll be covered by the sticky honeydew. The wood of the lime was the medium most favoured by Grinling Gibbons for carving and it's still used today for puppet making and also often for window frames and blinds. There are lots of lime trees in the gardens. There's a wonderful silver pendant lime down on the bottom lawn and further up on the top lawn there's a cut leaf lime and a small leaf lime which is a tree that was native to England and is an indication of very old woods. In fact limes used to be coppiced and can live to a great age. There is a lime coppice at Westonbert that is 2,000 years old. So here I am on the top lawn of Jefferson Gardens now with a magnificent tulip tree behind me. They can grow extremely tall, 170 feet in some places, a native of the eastern side of North America. The tree can be easily identified the end of June, early July by its yellow tulip-like flowers, hence the name tulip tree. Also by its very distinctive large leaves which some people think resemble a viola or violin hence sometimes it's called a fiddle tree. The Native Americans where it's most at home used it for their dugout canoes because it's soft wood and the trunk is long and straight so the early American settlers merely referred to it as canoe tree. In fact, it was a relatively early arrival in this country, being planted here in about the year 1688 and is to be found in many parks. In New York, the Queen's Giant 
is the oldest living thing in the city. I'm on the path near the top end of the archery lawn where there is this magnificent Japanese angelica. It obviously loves it here because it's spread wide and deep. Actually, when it was introduced to the States in 1830, it loved it so much that it's now regarded as an invasive species in the northeast of America. Now, Japanese angelica comes from China, Japan, Korea. And in the spring, the shoots are eaten as a delicacy, cut off and fried. In the summer, we have these glorious white blooms, which then turn into little droops, which the birds enjoy. And that's the way the seeds are spread and it becomes invasive. I'm still on the path next to the Japanese angelica, sitting underneath this wonderful clerodendron Harlequin Glory Bower. What a name. It's a small tree, deciduous, and it too comes from Japan. And in the summer, it has the most amazing show of flowers with a wonderful sweet scent. Mind you, not all clerodendrons have a wonderful sweet scent, be warned. And one of the things about the flowers that makes them very distinctive is they have very long stamens. And then in the winter, they have their fruit, the droops, again, which are loved by the birds. Thank you for watching this short video on our summer visit to Jefferson Gardens. I hope you've watched our other ones too. As always though, whatever the season, there's something to see in these gardens. They are kept wonderfully and for that we thank Warwick District Council's Green Spaces. Enjoy your time here. Come again. <laughs>